Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, welcome to the table. It's lovely to see y'all this morning on this beautiful Sunday of All Saints Day where we mourn our loved ones today, but we do not mourn like the world, amen? Because we know that through the finished work of Christ that we will see them again, amen? So let's worship him for that this morning. I know a place where we can go to lay the troubles down be your soul. I know a place where mercy flows. Take the stains, make you whiter than snow. Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings the death to life.
treasured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Beautiful one, I love Beautiful one, I adore Beautiful one, my soul must see Beautiful one Good morning. Now I can hear it. <laughs> it's so good to be here together and singing to the beautiful one that our hearts adore. And that's the reason that we gather each and every Sunday, our focus on Christ. And I love it so much. Thank you for being here today. And we have a guest. I don't normally do this, but Marie, thank you for coming today. Miss Mary Pino brought a friend with her, and I'm thankful that you're in our presence today. As um, we take an offering, we just want this service to be a gift to those that are visiting today. Um, and you can also use the QR codes on the tables to give in that way. Um, and we also have some baskets in the back if you want to give in that way. There are so many ways that we give through service and through our prayers, through our presence. And um, we're just so grateful for all of the gifts that we have in this church. And we have a lot going on, y'all. Every week I say that. This church is on the move. We like to do things. We have a lunch after the third service right here in this room about the trip to Greece. It's a discipleship discipleship trip um, that was going to be to the Holy Land, but because of the circumstances there, we have now pivoted, pivot, and now we're heading to Greece. We're going to trace the footsteps of Paul, and I cannot wait. A portion of that trip is a cruise. Hello. There is time for you to get on board with that. See what I did there? But I'm punch. Get on board. So if you'd like some information, if you think you may want to go on this discipleship trip, just come to the lunch today to hear about it and enjoy lunch. Um, it's going to be a great trip. I'm going. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Um, we also, today, I want to make you aware of, there is a fundraiser all of today at Cane's. Y'all, we have to eat. It supports our children's ministry and a portion of what is um, ordered, if you mention Blackwater United Methodist Church, they will donate that to our kids' ministry. So put Cane's on the dinner menu tonight and head on over there. We'll be there. Um, ads are on sale for our Advent book. We've got poinsettias. I can't believe we're at this time of the year. You can order poinsettias already. So much going on. Um, uh, what else do we have? 
we have a plate lunch sale um, that is coming up. Is this the one that benefits the family, the harvest one? Yeah, there's one on December 1st that's going to benefit the Rayburn family. We, they had a terrible loss. They had twin babies, and one of them passed this week. And so um, I'm just going to take that as an opportunity to segue into our next thing. And that's so I, I don't know if you all know that it is All Saints Sunday, and that is the day in the life of the church where we remember those families and those who uh, lost loved ones this past year. And so that's a hard, that's a hard one. We've all had losses. Um, and, um, and so that's why there's tables on either side this morning um, with unlit candles. And you can take the taper and you can light the candle, uh, light a candle uh, for someone um, if you've lost them. And I just want to provide some space real quick. Um, we're just going to play softly with no vocals yet. And we're going to uh, let you all call out the names of people that you've lost this year. And if you would come forward and light a candle in their honor, that would be great. Shepherd, I shall know. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name. great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside
Hallelujah. We will bless your name, God. The scripture today is out of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. I invite you to follow along on the screen or in your Bibles. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. And now you can hear me better. And so I want you to think about this. I want you to think of what you know, first of all, about painters. I'm a painter. I like to spend a lot of time in my studio perfecting my paints, but I'm no Picasso. Think of a younger, more magnificent painter, a good one, a really good one, Picasso. Now, wouldn't it be awful if Picasso poured all of his heart and his soul and his torment and all of the things that, that he's had going on in his life that inspire his beautiful artwork, wouldn't be ashamed if, he, if those got hung up in a gallery and you just walked up to the picture and then you just walked away, didn't spend any time appreciating it. Now, I want you to think about God's love in those terms. Wouldn't it be ashamed if we didn't look at the masterpiece of God's love and not take it in deeply and appreciate it for what it is. I want to show you a picture. This is a picture of the Seven Sisters Oak in Mandeville. You know what's beautiful about this? This tree 
is like 42 feet around <laughs> at the base. That's how big you, this thing is. What's interesting about this tree is it has stood, they think, for at least five or six centuries. Now, I don't know about you, but anything that survives this planet for five or six centuries is a big deal, amen? <laughs> like, that's pretty impressive. But especially here, especially here in Louisiana where we have storms and all kinds of craziness, tornadoes and hail and all of the things. Think about the things, the soil conditions, the, the wars, all of the things that this tree has survived in five or six hundred years. And just as that tree is susceptible to its conditions, the weather and, the, and all of that, we also are susceptible to our conditions, aren't we, as people? Sometimes those conditions can be things like distraction. Distractions or things that the world tells us that we should value. Empty wishes. And that's a problem because they're never satisfying those things. They don't ever lead to fulfillment. They don't ever lead to a feeling of being sustained. They only lead to emptiness and disappointment and letdowns. How many of you would be bold enough to admit this morning that you have felt let, let down? <laughs> you have been let down by something in your life. You know, it's hard. It's hard when we have a world that's constantly bombarding us with messages that we have to have this or that to feel good. We have to have this or that to look good. I bought me one of these electric massa foot massagers. That thing was a piece of junk. I paid $50 for that thing, and it didn't do nothing. It didn't make me feel good. But, you know, I believed the world when the world said I needed it, right? My goodness. I bought that in secret, my wife says. Yeah, don't get on the secret shopping, girl. I've <laughs> seen you at a few garage sales. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but let's just, let's just all agree. We find things, right, that we buy into, that we need to have this in order to be. I'll tell you another one. One of the most emptiest things is God, social media. Like, I need my value or my self-worth based on what's posted or how many likes or loves or that's just ugh. it's an unquenching never satisfying thing it really is and if that's not it for you maybe fear and insecurity maybe that resonates with you there's a lot of that a mindset of scarcity, a scarcity that says that God is not going to give us all of what we need or all of who we need or all of what's going to in order for us to be okay, right? So we somehow have this mindset of scarcity, which prevents us to be being generous in our lives. And it robs us of opportunities to bless not only ourselves. You know, the people you may not be most generous to is the one standing in the mirror when you get ready in the morning. And that's unfortunate. Because as a beloved child of God, the Bible says that you see in a mirror dimly. <laughs> but there with God, you will see clearly. And God values you so much that God's only son was given for you. So this mindset of fear and insecurity and scarcity, listen, we don't need to have anything to do with that. And then, as if all of that's not enough, we deal with things in our lives that, well, that just leave us not centered on God. We put things in the center, possessions, people, relationships, all kinds of things, events. I mean, there's so many things that we can center our life around. And probably the poorest choice is when we put the big I right in the middle. The big I right in the middle. That's never a good thing, is it? 
where everything revolves around you. That's not what we're called to as Christians. We're called to put God in the center. Jesus Christ is the center post where everything revolves around him. Because here's what happens. When everything revolves around Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is in the center of every relationship, everything we do, everything we have, every gratitude that we hold, and we're revolving around that, it draws us all together towards him. That is saying I do to a life of worship and a covenant with God. You and I, we have to determine what's going to be at the center of our lives. You and I, we have to determine who is going to be at the center of our lives. And if it's anybody other than the person of Jesus Christ, I beg you to reconsider. And if it's you, I beg you to reconsider. I don't know about you, but I have to check that. I have to check myself, right? And kind of go, ooh, no, I got to take me out of this and put Jesus Christ in the middle. That way we're all growing towards his love and his beauty, the beautiful one. And then I can be overwhelmed with gratitude. <laughs> then I can lead, leave, live a season of thanksgiving in my life this November because it's authentic, because I'm truly grateful for who's at the center of my universe, right? We all do that at the same time, and we create something here like nothing else, a community that's so sustaining and life-giving that we won't be able to help ourselves but be here and be part of it. That's the vision, that we rally with Jesus Christ, that if we're going to fly a flag around here, we're flying the Jesus Christ flag, and that we're going to sit and revolve around who he is, and that way we get a proper perspective of who we are. When we look in the mirror, we can kind of say, oh God, thank you that I get to reflect any part of your goodness when I fall so short, and yet you stand in the gap. That's what saying I do to worship means. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you, God, with all of our hearts for this wrecking ball of a scripture that comes in this morning and reminds us, God, that we can live from glory to better glory by saying I do to you. Thank you, God, that we can get a true sense of who you made us by putting you in the center of our lives, Lord, and having everything revolve around your son. God, help us. Help us in our seasons of unbelief. Help us in our seasons of struggle or low self-esteem or whatever it is we're going through, Father. Only you can provide. Only you can sustain. Only you, God, can change our hearts. Help us live as a transformed people, Father, so that there may be a ripple effect of your son's perfect love into our church, into our community, and into our world. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, God, receive the mercy and grace to the extent you have given it fully for us. And I pray, God, that we would be changed and that we would be changers. In Christ's name we pray, amen. At the center, of a beautiful, beautiful gathering of his friends and betrayers. Jesus Christ took a loaf of bread and gave God thanks and broke it and said, it's my body broken for you. And the next time you eat it, remember, 
And then in a similar way, he took a cup and he gave God thanks and he did so, something so radical and mind-bending that it raised a bunch of eyebrows. And he said, I'm the new covenant. Say I do to me. Because this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of all. And every time you drink it, you remember me. And so, God, I ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. So that we may live one with him, one with each other, one in ministry to the world. And I pray, God, that you would do that until the day we join the church triumphant and sit at the banquet table and feast with the King of Kings for all eternity. I pray that in Christ's name and in the power of your spirit, O holy, beautiful one, in Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to ask those who are going to prepare communion to come forward and prepare those elements. And as they do, I remind you, this is not the table's table. It's not Blackwater's table. It's not the United Methodist Church's table. This is the Lord's table. Therefore, you're all welcome to come and receive. If for some reason your convictions won't allow you to do that, I ask that you respond to the extravagant love that God has shown you and just cross your hands and we'll just say a blessing over you. You'll come forward, you'll receive bread, dip the bread in the juice and receive both of those elements at the same time and then sit and remember that the God who was is God still today, giving us everything that we need and is the God who is coming back.
the sinners, the showers of grace over all our mistakes, washes us clean with his blood, Jesus does. sings the songs of sweet forgiveness who stole the keys to hell and the grave who has the power to save Jesus does for you so we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son and praise to the Spirit his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his own countenance upon you and bring you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Go with the peace of Christ. Amen.